camera cleaning. It'll clean the camera. Look at that hecticness. Wow. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of LJ's Garage. I am sitting in a 2024 BMW X2. This one is the X-Drive 28i. And I know you guys are wondering, how does BMW take a mini platform and turn it into an awesome sports activity vehicle? Today, I'm gonna show you how well, I'm not gonna show you why, because I am no engineer, but I'm gonna walk you through the insides, the outsides, talk about some specs, and let you know what I think about the BMW X2. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you why. For around $50,000, you're getting a whole lot of SAV. And I'm not gonna say that. Sav. You're getting Sav. You're getting lots of Sav. But LJ's about to get savvy with you and uh, uh, walk you through this. So, so let's get right into it. So you get two different variations of the X2. There's the traditional X2 that's geared towards fuel economy and a decent driving experience. And then there's the sporty M variant of the X2. And I'll talk about that in another video, but today we're gonna talk about the 28i. 241 horsepower, 295 foot-pounds of torque, zero to 60 in about 6.2 seconds. And compared to the M variant, that one's got 312 horsepower and zero to 60 in about 5.2 seconds. So so for a little bit more money, you get a little bit more performance. Easy, right? This one starts at about 42,000. It has the premium package as well as the driving assistance package. So these two packages are my go-to recommendations. Anything else? It depends, it depends. But this one is equipped in the way that I would spec an X2. And I know when I do these videos, if you're new to the channel, I try to find ones that I think the everyday shopper is going to want. And then there's the people that have a more loose budget that really don't care. They're just fully loaded, send it to the moon, and I want that. And if you go for the M variant, well, you're gonna get a lot more performance and there's not much that's pushing 300 horsepower for these crossover styled SUVs. One of the things that I like about this interior is BMW calls this the Veganza. I think it's how it is. It's supposed to be like a twist on vegan, the Veganza, extravaganza, Veganza. I'm probably saying that very inappropriately. So if I am, I'm sorry, but that's what they call this interior. And uh, it's nice, holds up well. I wouldn't go with a white interior personally, been there, done that, never again. Never again will I do that. The only other spec I forgot to talk about is gas mileage. This will get around 33 miles per gallon average, which is fantastic. With the specs out of the way, let's hop on the outside, talk about that for a quick little moment, and then we'll get back on the inside. I'll show you some bells and whistles, and then uh, give you overall thoughts on the X2. And if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It would be an awesome pleasure to have you on board as I go for that 20,000 subscriber point. I forgot to mention that this is an eight-speed automatic transmission, and the power is coming from a two-liter inline four-cylinder, so if you are familiar with BMW's reliable engines, this is the half variant of their six-cylinder, so you would take that and then this one. And then this. Two plus two is four minus one. That's three quick maths. Do the math, but you know what I'm trying to say. Normally you'd have the six cylinder, the B58. And this one's the B48, I believe is the engine code for this. But it's an awesome four cylinder. Um, It's fantastic. And when you throw in a turbo to all this mix, you're getting performance that's you know almost unreal for a car of this size. But go drive one. Let me know what you think. If you've driven one and have one, I mean, I'm surprised you're watching this video, but let me know. All right, so here we are on the outside. You're gonna notice one of the first things is BMW's got rid of their angel hot headlights, and now you have these boomerang style that come out for your daytime running lights. I'm not the biggest fan, only because I like the halo lights more, but if I didn't know that BMW used to do the angel eyes, these would have been really nice as well. You can spec this with an illuminated grill if you so choose, as well as getting this with the M Sport package to get some of the shadow line, black exterior, you know, the larger brakes, uh, performance suspension, those type of things. But for most people, they don't really need all of those things. So um, as it sits, this is a very well-equipped uh, SAV. Um, but take a look at the wheels. Very sharp, very nice. Uh, something else I wanna point out over here is you see that on this little running board, it's got a very unique like diamond uh, rubberized design. Gives it a little bit of character, I would say. Um, overall, I mean, I like the look of this. And if you're someone who likes the X6, the X4, then this X2 actually makes a lot of sense for you. Um, like I said, not too much else to dive in up front. Let's start to go to the back, give you guys a little side profile. This is what it looks like from the side. And like I said, I'll show you guys an X2, an X6, an X4. They're all very similar in the back end. Let me back up a tiny bit. So X-Drive, 28i. X-Drive is your all-wheel drive system for those of you that are unfamiliar. And I mean, this has just got a very nice stance to it. For me personally, I'm a big fan of the X1 more than the X2. 
and I'm a big fan of the X5 over the X4, and I'm a big fan of the X5 over the X6. So same thing with the X3 over the X2. So if you like this sport back style, then this is gonna speak to you. If you don't, then it's not gonna work. Look what BMW's done. Push this little round L. Boom, boom. And now you have access to the trunk. Very nice bit of space. That's one of the best things about a sports activity vehicle or a crossover as normal people may call it. So down here, you're able to see you've got a spare tire and a little extra compartment under here that houses your jack and spare tire. Give that a little close and there you go. This is a power trunk, so give that a push. Let me step out of the way so you guys can see that in all its glory. There you have it. Nothing else to really talk about back here. You do have a very intricate diffuser for a single exhaust, but of course that's, you know, the sporty feel of this. Very nice taillights. Overall, like I said, to me, I'm a big X1 over X2 fanatic, so I'm a little biased. So this is what your key looks like. You're gonna have your trunk release, your lock, your unlock, and then your lock is actually your BMW logo if you're unfamiliar. So let's go ahead and we'll go into the back seat. Give that an open right there. As you guys can see, there is a good bit of room. One of the things with this is you would think that it sacrifices headroom, and it does slightly, but we're talking like 5%, 10% uh, from the shape because BMW does a really good job of not sloping it till you get to like past the headrest. Um, so it's pretty nice. I like, I like what they've done there. Let me go ahead and hop in. Sorry for any road noise. So here I am in the back seat, plenty of headroom. As I said, like I'm 5'9", average size person, so average size people have no problems back here. So if somebody was about six foot tall, and that's what I have this seat set for in the easy entrance exit, you can see 5'9 is about as good and comfortable as it's gonna get. 5'10 starts to get a little snug, but not the worst thing. You're gonna have rear climate vents with two charge ports, and I love what they've done with this sleek center console. You're sacrificing your iDrive system with the size of this, but BMW's made the most practical use of the space. You have this nice mesh right here to keep your maps. And then overall, this Viganza interior, that sounds like I'm saying that way wrong, is, uh, is nice. It's smooth to the touch. Over here, you got your Harman Kardon sound system. And I love what they've done with this decoration altogether. It just, it gives the X2 its own little character that I feel like most people will appreciate. Pull this guy down right here. You do have cup holders. And just like that, it's your back seats. And this is what everything looks like over on the passenger side. Great area to be. Take a look at your screen. As I said earlier, there's no iDrive on the center console, but I'll show you guys, they've done a pretty good job of incorporating everything into the screens, no complaints. So walking up to this, you'll notice your Harman Kardon sound once again, memory seats set for his, hers, 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 whatever it may be. You do get your power seat controls down there even further and more of the Vaganza interior again i'm gonna call it that even if i'm wrong very nice sunroof let me go ahead and start this up vroom vroom all right but look at this the shade doing its shading nice pretty familiar over on this left hand side lighting controls your lock your unlock memory seats as i said earlier and then look at this very cool design for like a grab handle it's just fancy. Like, I mean, if you're the driver and you're holding on like this, I mean, we got problems. But this thing is that much of a driving experience that you might need that. No paddle shifters, which is unfortunate, but you do have a very, very nice steering wheel. Let me go ahead and back out a little bit here. You got a very nice steering wheel. You're going to have simple controls. All these things are really familiar. On the steering wheel, this is the controls for this guy right here. So, most importantly, if you press this little button, this little screen pops up down in the bottom right corner. And so it allows you to customize this display. So all you do is you can either go left, right, up, down, and as you move up and down, you can change the layout to see what you want, maps right there. Special thanks to Evans BMW over here in Dayton, Ohio. If you need directions to them, um, Google it, or just ask your BMW to take you here. Ooh, Sad But True by Metallica. You guys like that song? I think it's a good song. Let's go over to the right-hand side. You'll see that on the right-hand side, it's got the two edges highlighted, so that's gonna allow you to customize the screen on the outside or the outer edges of the screen. And you can do a simple display with the maps, a couple different options as well. 
then your head-up display you guys won't be able to see it quite clear but you can see it flickering a little bit and a couple different options as well you can do maps you can do all different views to kind of customize it to the feel that you like overall though all the information that you need is readily available you'll have your fuel mileage right there or as far as your range of mileage your time your occupancy alerts um, it's going to show you your speed limit signs right there and then outside temperature and then the operating temp of the car itself i'm not trying to tell everyone that they have to give up their uh physical buttons and things like that if you don't like this stuff i totally get it i'm not trying to force it on you but i like the way that bmw is doing it so easy shortcuts to your climate so you can always adjust those on the go fan speed you click that little slow on the response but there you go it'll pop up and you can control everything from there this has dual climate control as you can see is there um, but you can turn everything off. It's even got a little picture of the car and all that fan, fun stuff. Hit the menu button. We'll go back home. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, both available on, on this. You can hit a shortcut again for climate controls. You can turn on the lights from here. So if you look up, I'm controlling that from here. This isn't really anything crazy per se, but I like that they've done it. And if you really do want, you do have physical sight of like haptic touch buttons as well up there. So more than one way to skin this chicken i think that's the expression could be wrong as well let's get back to this though ambient lighting with different colors Ooh, flamingo pink i know some of you guys that'll really like that color accent lighting reading lighting cockpit brightness all of those good things are adjustable from there instead of just making your driving experiences like a push button this makes it a whole like dynamic thing it's supposed to change all your ambient lighting for you which it changed it all to red when I was in sport mode, um, you know, there's different sounds, feels, just everything is just an experience when you use the my modes. So, you know, just quick mention of that. Seat comfort, we can click that. You can adjust your seat positions from here. Comfort exit, that's again what I was talking about where you get in and out of the car. Once you turn it off, it'll move the seat back, steering wheel up, makes it easy for you to get in and out. You've got parking cameras, we'll click that really fast so you guys can see the resolution and this does have the parking assistant package with it so it is trying to ask if i need help getting out of this parking space got a bunch of parking assistant features when it comes to this stuff i would need a whole video to deep dive and teach you guys how to use all these parking features panorama view parking assist view with all the sensors and all the goodies and whatnot hit more you can go to camera cleaning it'll clean the camera look at that hecticness wow Although that does leave a little trail on your car, but clean cameras are more important. Three-dimensional view, boom, boom. Fancy, right, right, okay. I like that it's got a back button here and a back button when you're in those menus. You can go to live vehicle. You can kind of see your stats and things like that. You can move your car around. Here's those headlights I was talking about. What do you guys think? Do you guys like that? It's kind of got those like boomerang style i don't know it kind of gives me like nissan vibes i don't know what it is but I, I i don't know i'm torn i'm torn guys other than that in here there isn't anything else that's too crazy it's got all the features you could need but let's talk about safety features that's what i forgot so the cool thing too is this menu is sorted so you can go to recently used you can go to infotainment and then you can go to vehicle so that's what we want to go to and we're going to go to driver settings or driving settings, excuse me there. There's various settings in here that you can deep dive into whenever you buy one of these. The iconic sounds is just like funneled in noise from BMW speakers. But driving assistance, we'll go here. You got your parking ones, which I talked about. Let's hit driving. You got your speed limit assistant, speed limit exceeding warning, speed control, lane guiding with navigation, distance control, automatic lane change. You got assisted driving plus notifications hill descent all of these are here so if you click on assisted plus it'll tell you everything about that feature that you need to know to figure out if you want to keep it on so it enables you to take your hands off the wheel while in suitable driving conditions um, and it just tells you to stay attentive so basically it has a mild self-driving ability i would say that's pretty good for what you're getting at this price point and i know that 2024 a lot of cars have this but for this price point this is like a must-have in my mind Hit safety and warnings. You're going to have forward collision avoidance, lane departure warning. You're going to have blind spot detection, exit warning, traffic light and sign warning, side collision warnings. Scroll down even further. You're going to have fatigue alerts. Uh, that's all the normal stuff. 
but it has a lot of safety features. So with this one having the driving assistance pro package and the premium package, I think that this is the way that I would certainly equip this personally. And then over here, you got your nav, your telephone, if you click that. Um, right now, I don't have anything connected. Nav, again, easy. Most people are going to use their CarPlay, so you got those. Then over here, you got your defrosters. Those are physical buttons. And like I said, BMW is thinking. They know people like that. One thing I don't like is this giant vent, but I guess this one's for the driver and these are for the passenger, but it throws me off with how gigantic. Look at this. Look how big that is. Down here, you have a wireless charging pad and your cup holders. Got a nice little, uh, you know, trim decor going on right there. And then this thing has a little like handle so you can like lock your phone into place, make sure it doesn't slide, slide around when you're doing spirited driving. Over here, you got your glove box. Nothing unfamiliar with that. And let's talk about this area right here. So no iDrive system. This console doesn't move or anything. It's fixed in place. But it does allow you to get shortcuts to like my modes and you can click that you click this again and that's going to bring up your menu for your driving assistance features. So pretty cool little shortcut as well. Engine stop start your shifter which looks like a piece of this it doesn't even look like a shifter but flick up flick down click that for your parking cameras look at that or your driving assistance parking package all that good stuff. Then you're here you got your volume nice little easy adjuster shift your songs right there and then for your center console you push this and you get a little bit of access to this intricate little space here but don't worry underneath here there's even more space so you got a nice little tunnel here to keep your purse or whatever you guys keep your visor what's up what's up and then you do have a little interior camera right there so that's pretty nice like i said this has lots of bells and whistles it's got lots of cool things and the vaganza interior or vegan veganese that's soft very nice very nice very nice what are you guys thinking so far are you guys liking this x2 are you liking what this has to offer so i'm going to give you guys the cliff notes of the driving experience fun spirited great braking great handling perfect size for people who like little city mobiles i say that all the time but this like i said built on a mini platform so it's nimble light on its feet and it's just a good time so if you are looking for something that's more fun than a rav4 x drive this is nice very reliable consider the bmw x2 that's all i got to say for this one if you guys have any questions comments concerns let me know share some thoughts down below i'll get back to you as soon as i can and otherwise i'll see you on the next one peace